Hi guys, welcome to Often Tenth. My name is Chris, and today we're gonna to take a look at a beer that I've had a few times. I've had this one in a can. I've had this one on tap. Um, actually, there's only one place that I know of. Well, I don't really go out anymore, but untapped, not untapped, but um, on a tap in Niagara Falls at a bar at Chuck's Roadhouse in Niagara Falls, they have this beer. And every time I go to Chuck's Roadhouse, I always have at least one pint of this one. Uh, today, out of Chicago, Illinois, we're taking a look at Goose Island's IPA. That's right, the IPA, it is owned now, Goose Island is now owned by Anheuser-Busch, so this would be macro, or I'm gonna call it a micro macro, I guess. All right, so let's take a look at this can right here. All right, so like I said, out of Chicago, we're looking at uh, Goose Island's uh, IPA. Uh, it's coming in at 5.9% alcohol by volume. It's in a 473 milliliter can. 55 IBUs are listed at the time of this review. I don't know how old this can is. It was in the LCBO, so that's what we get. So yeah, it's an American IPA. So it's probably gonna be West Coast style. It's usually what they do. They don't say West Coast style IPAs unless on, on, on tap anyway, that I know of, but. Let's get into this one. Actually, I'm gonna roll it a little bit. Please don't explode on me. All right, I haven't had this in a while and I haven't reviewed it, so I'm actually looking forward to doing this one. That's part. All right, it is not as West Coasty as I thought it was gonna be. Ashy, now that it, now that it has gone into the glass, it is crystal clear pretty much. Um, yeah, it's, it's an orange color. Uh, yeah, head on this one. Pour off with about a finger and a half of a nice, big, fluffy-looking head on this beer. Yeah, it looks uh, it looks inviting. Let's take a smell. All right, there is a pine resin right off the hop. I mean, I just did the sinister minister over behind back there. You can't see it, but from Brimstone, and that was 90 IBUs, and I didn't get as much pine on the scent on that one as I do with this one. Yeah, and there's a tropical note, like tropical. There's a citrus and, and I guess tropical note on this one as well. There's grapefruit in this one. That's what I'm kind of smelling on this one. Grapefruit kind of citrus note on it. Pithiness, maybe a little bit of the flesh. But of course, it's a West Coast style IPA, so I'm getting a lot of that pine coming through as well. So let's take a sip. Cheers. It's been a while since I've had this one too. Body on this one, a little bit low end of medium. It's not, it's not a big, thick, viscous beer. I wouldn't expect it to be at 5.9%. It's a West Coast style IPA that is drinking refreshing like. So I mean, it's not a bigger body. It's low end of medium. Yeah, it's good. 5.9%, you can't tell. This is pretty much the standard. ABV and all these IPAs or stouts or even what we're getting is around six, 5.9 is close enough to six that this is pretty much the standard. And they're labeling anything that's around this as a strong beer, whatever. Anything over five and a half or 5% is labeled as a strong beer. Guys, get your shit together in Canada. It's not a strong beer over, I would say over 8% would be, should be labeled as a strong beer now. But anyway, on the taste on this one, we're getting, yeah, those tropical notes are coming through. That grapefruit is definitely coming through on this taste. But right at the beginning of this palette, just like just like the Center Center Minister, right at the beginning of the palette, again, that sweetness and that little bit of a citrus note coming through and then about halfway through, the pine kicks in, but it's not as piney as the Sinister Minister was, but I got more pine on the nose on this one, but the pine is there, that pine resin is there, that little bit of bitterness. It turns around at the, like I said, halfway through the palate, and then it ends being a semi-dry finish, not as dry as Sinister Minister. So that kind of, you know, makes sense on the IBU numbers. I mean, Sinister Minister, I think was 90 IBUs. This one's 55. And now I'm starting to understand that it's all about that bitterness and all about that drying finish 
This is fucking refreshing as hell. I like this beer. Like I said, every time I go to Chuck's Roadhouse, I haven't been there in a couple years, but every time I go there, I always get a pint of this one. And there's no doubt that next time I go in there, I will definitely get another pint of this one. Uh, guys, in my own opinion, the Goose Islands Beer Company Micro Macro Beer, the IPA, if you haven't had this one, either in a can or on tap somewhere, try it out. You might actually enjoy this one. This is not super hoppy. It's not super piney. It's not super bitter. It's good. It's a different beer than whatever else is on tap over there. I'll tell you right now. Unless you're at a, you know, a brewery that just has, or a restaurant that just has craft beers and stuff like that. But, for example, at Chuck's Roadhouse in Niagara Falls, this is the only craft brew beer that's on tap over there that I know of. Everything else is all the generics, you know, Coors Light, Canadian Bud, Bud Light, whatever it is. This one is the only one that's considered basically, uh, you know, craft beer. But guys, in my own opinion, this is so good. I could totally pound all day long on these beers. Anyway, guys, that's my own opinion. Uh, if you like the video, Goose Island IPA. If you like the video, click the like button down below. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.